sounds like someone walked through the snow for a second. Just a quick audio check just to make sure we're coming through. Yeah, I think we're good. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the world of Astaria, the ongoing Dungeons & Dragons podcast stream here on the Game House Twitch page and the World of Astaria YouTube channel. I'm your host, your DM, your UM, and your man of a million voices that all eerily all sound exactly the same with a minor accent that could be offensive, Chandler Angle. And I am joined by a majority of my group this week. We got Rob as Revan, we got Marie as Mina, we got Sam as Salvador, and we got Sid as Eris, the only person who didn't get the memo about alliteration with their names, but that's fine. Well, actually, no, Braxton didn't, but unfortunately, Braxton is not here this week. Uh, but that being said, everybody, welcome back. Hopefully you all uh, are doing all right, and hopefully you're all up for a little bit of escapism today, as uh, I know I am, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll save on the, the gripes Agreed. later. Uh, I was told everything in this podcast was like a true story. A stream, I guess. <laughs> yes. Uh, every, every single thing you're watching is indeed a, a real story. These events did happen somewhere at some point. Also, what up, chat? Thanks for stopping by, Shardon. Hopefully you're having a good day, buddy. Um, uh, but last time we left off on our totally real, based on true event story of some place that happened once, uh, the Doomsday Defenders had assembled... They had started the tower back up. They had agreed on a route. Uh, a little bit of panic happened with Arrakis, who has realized he hasn't called his um, wife in a while, and also a little bit of a realization of like, oh, they know about it. Uh, as he then slunk off to a place to make that call as travel began. Uh, the group sort of having a little bit of a hijinks the evening before when they were getting some sleep and uh, Salvador waking up next to that dog skeleton man uh, and then clattering all the bones to the ground after Revan pulled off a, 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 a mildly pretty sick prank. Uh, but that being said, the group of you all rose and you met with your uh, quote-unquote pilot, uh, Danek Malst, the human dragonborn hybrid sorcerer who is currently flying you on your path towards the destination of a mountain range deep in Wellen. Uh, you have also been made aware that the nation of Tarak is currently overrun by zombies, which are at the moment not advancing past the border. Uh, there's been skirmishes here and there, but um, they so far haven't continued their push. Uh, that being said, uh, you all, like, as I said, are in the tower and... Last time, Salvador rolled an 82 for travel. And with that, the wind picks up, but the skies are clear. Not a creature in sight, no bad weather on the horizon. You guys have a full, clear day of smooth sailing or smooth flying in your case. Yo, welcome team. My goodness. Oh, yeah. That's what they call me. Clear sky sound. Oh. Nobody calls me that. Oh, oh. Mm. So yes, I, I prefer Sally, but you know. Yes, uh, uh, good roll by Sally, as uh, you all are safely traveling. Uh, that being said, as you travel, is there anything you all would like to do on your travels? As you are currently about like 60 feet in the air and rising steadily as the tower is flying. Um, you have all of the floors to, you know, if you need a need a second to go look into something, or if you want to work on something, the tower comes equipped with obviously the pilot's deck, which you all are in right now. There's the level below that that has a sort of rudimentary abandoned workshop with a few working tables, and then the teleportation room. Below that, there's a sort of the the sort of living space where the bedroom, a little sitting area, the bathroom, and the stairway are. And below that, you have the sort of small sort of entryway to the tower where you you know the front door basically is and then underneath that is the large kind of basement area that's sort of like a grand hall it has access to the kitchen a storage room with supplies the engine room and a bathhouse that Revan I believe made use of towards the end of the session last time he did he did so I think one of the things I'm going to be working on is probably just cleaning. Okay, so Mina's so, going to be... A little nasty. Okay. Mina, I'm going to go ahead and um, dust up the tower a little. Oh, I was about to play some background sounds and the fucking... 
Firehouse <laughs> Subs commercial came on, so thankfully we stopped. And there's two ads. That's great. So we have Mina uh, about to do a little um, season's cleanings on the tower. Uh, Indeed. We'll get to that in a little bit then. Uh, Salvador, Revan, and Eris. Is there anything you guys would like to do as you were hanging out in the tower? What are we doing on food? Uh, food, um, from last you, well, you haven't really checked, but you are aware that, uh, before leaving, Mira, the owner of the Magical Flying House, did indeed part with some supplies for you all, as well as a few things to kind of make the tower a little bit more solid. There's still massive holes in some parts of the walls, but you at least have a decent supply of food for now. Fantastic. Do you have any alcohol? Uh, you can go have a look. You definitely can go and see if there's alcohol inside of the supplies that uh, Mira left for you all. So we got, uh, at the very least, Mina doing a little bit of cleaning. We got Revan going over supplies. Uh, Eris and Salvador, is there anything you two would like to do? I know what Salvos is doing. Uh, it is time for us to reload the god-killing weapon, uh, the Drank Trank. Okay. Um, drink, drink. Because, because, because we can use that one shot. We use that one shot, and now uh, that thing needs a big boy reload, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I say, yeah, incomprehensibly, I'm sorry, I'm very tired. Um, but no, 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 Salvador's gonna get on that workbench, you know? Gonna get some shit together. Okay. Gonna reload that drink trank. So Salvador mm. is gonna go down to, like, the little oh, okay. workshop space and kind of, uh, reload the drink trank. Do you have your own alcohol on you, or...? Oh, yes, no, because not only do we have the cheap, shitty wine Salvador just happens to carry around with him, we also have the very nice, uh, hard liquor from uh, the tavern that the, I think, Revan owns, or the party owns, I'm not sure. Oh, co-owns. The, the party owns. Yeah, the, party, owns. the party yes. majority co-owns the tavern. Actually, gotcha. no, the, the only members, well, it's still a majority, but the current members who are have stock in the Little Devil are only Aragon, Mina, and Revan. Wow. <laughs> Woo! Losers. Bam, 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 baby. Uh, the other majority owners being Vanith, uh, and technically mellow uh but she sort of dipped when you guys got back to the mainland so other than that the, yes the only real owners of the tavern right. here besides strevin mellow. and his wife uh are those three but yeah you you have at the very least uh, salvador you have your hip flask you have your cheap wine uh so yeah yeah uh, we'll get to you wonderful then. uh so we'll have so we got Mino on cleaning revan's look at supplies salvador's tinkering in the lab uh, Eris, is there anything you would like to do? Um, I guess I'll just be a heavy lifter to help Mina clean up and organize. Okay, so... Thank you, I'm very petite. Alright, so we got Eris and Mina doing a little bit of cleaning. Um, Aragon's gonna go ahead and stay up top with SAB, just to let the, you know, you, you see SAB kind of like, out of one of the whole parapet window kind of situations at the top here, he's got his head out the window, kind of like, you know, lolling his tongue out. Classic dog in a car style. Uh, but yeah. I love that thing. With that, we'll go ahead and start with Mina and Eris. Uh, where would you like to start cleaning? There's the the a total of one, two, three, four, five floors to this tower. So my priorities would probably start with the kitchen, get that in working order since that's where we're going to be preparing our food, and then from there move to the bathroom to make sure the bathroom is nice and clean, and then after that into the, like, the living areas. Okay, in that case we're going to go ahead and take you guys down to the basement area. Uh, Mina, you and Eris um, already got you guys down here. Uh, you guys walk down, you enter into the kind of grand sort of... Um, sitting area or dining hall area where there's, you know, two large banquet tables ex sit, one of them being smashed to bits, and then like a kind of mm. stone sitting area exists. Oh, he's not on this floor now, but at the very least, copy, and he is out of there. All right, but yeah, uh, you know where the kitchen is. It's the room up here in the tower, um, but would you, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, but yeah, you walk in the kitchen while it has been recently stocked uh, with, you know, wrapped food and whatnot. Uh, you do see that the implements, uh, while new, uh, some of the other things are a bit grimier and still dusty. You know, the tables, the floors, uh, the you know how you have running boards on the walls that just gather dust if you don't vacuum them every now and then? Yes. Yeah, those things are practically 
coated in, in dust and sand. Beautiful. All right. Well, um, I guess we should get to work. Do you want us to roll? Uh, yeah, if, unless you have any type of, like, magic that you can use to circumvent needing to roll, uh, you can go ahead and... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was looking, and I I thought that at one point I had mending, but I don't... I was gonna say, do you have, so... um, uh, as, as a friendly DM thing, do you have prestidigitation? Uh, I don't anymore. Anymore? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, in that case, uh, Mina and Eris, you both can go ahead and roll me a d20, just flat d20 rolls to see how well you, uh, you start cleaning up this kitchen. All right. <coughs> Pardon me if I, uh, if I sound a little, uh, coffee or sick today. Nat 20, bitch! Nice job, okay. This place is spotless. So we got Mina. Yeah, 17. Okay. That's a great role. Yeah. Shit, look at us. So, you guys kind of, you know, Mina, Eris, you both roll the sleeves up, you know, set your stuff to the side for, like, you know, weapons and walking staff-wise, uh, and you manage to uh, go into um, the kitchen. And there are, like, as you, like, see the, some supplies sitting out, there's also a few supplies intended for cleaning that you're able to easily find and make use of. As, Wonderful. yeah, within... About about a span of like maybe fifteen minutes, you guys have gotten most of the kind of grime and dust cleaned up of the kitchen. Um, you know, you look at a few of the kind of like sitting dishes that were left and that are still usable. And you you know you're able to kind of scrub and clean those up. And I'm talking like you give it to work. So like there is a coffee mug with serious coffee like circle stain in it, spotless now. As you guys have pretty wow. much brought this kitchen into a pretty. Um, we won't say it would pass health inspection, but boy, oh boy, it's it's definitely uh, it, it's it's definitely far better than some kitchens you've probably seen before. Incredible! What a team! All right, let's head to the bathrooms. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and have you guys. I, I'm in the kitchen, by yeah, the way. I was. I noticed I was... you were kind of in the way while we were cleaning. Yeah, I will. Uh, I was gonna say well, I as you guys... you guys getting that shit out of the way. I was going to say, as you guys head to the bathrooms, Revan, uh, you, you know, give it about 15 minutes so you're not asked to help clean the kitchen. You see them two, you see those two exit and you walk into <laughs> a, now, pristine, well not pristine, but very, very nice kept kitchen. Oh, wow. They did such a great job and I had so much to do with this. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But I am going to go check uh, all the cupboards and start looking for alcohol and food. All right. Uh, for the alcohol, go ahead and roll me a uh, an investigation check. Fifteen. Uh, 15? uh you take a look around and you're you know you kind of start off in some of the crates that are like okay this is clearly food 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 and after a little bit of looking you don't find hard alcohol but you do find ale um you find a sort of you know about up to mm. your shin height of two crates that are filled with like pre-bottled ale all right i uh take this and i start to go and look for a drinking buddy while uh you know to pass the time until we get there okay um in that case i'll um uh, i'll give you a rundown of where the rest of the crew are you know that the driver's at the helm aragon's up there hanging out with sab uh you saw felden sort of in uh well, actually i gotta put felden on the map because he is down here Here I was going to ask where he was. That that's I was going to go grab him and, and uh Baracus. Yeah, I was going to say um, and go drink with them. You didn't uh you didn't see Arrakis, where Arrakis was as you were coming down, but you know he's in the tower uh because you saw him in the kind of, you know, cockpit as you were pulling up and then he excused himself as he said, I got to make a call. Uh but yeah, um you heard Felden kind of kicking around in this general storage area, which I still have yet to put a bunch of crates in, but there's, you know, there's stuff in there. Um, but yeah, you know he's kicking around down here as well. You saw Mina and Eris kind of making their way towards the ba bathing area. 
Um, but yeah, you were able to find what it, I guess what equates to like um, like basically four twenty four packs of ale. Oh, plenty. All right, I yell it to Felden. Like just a couple of six packs and find Felden. Oh, I'm taking the whole crate with me. Oh, one okay. of them. All right, in that case, um, then yeah, one crate will be able to hold about. Um, well, we'll see. Yeah, each crate has about twenty-four drinks in them. So, yeah, you pick up a crate of twenty-four ales, and uh, as you're kind of walking around the creaky floor and a little dusty floor, you see Felden in the uh, back room, kind of going through things. Hey, Felden! Oh. Right. I'm wasting your time and come out and drink with me. Oh, uh, well, I, you know what? Um, sure. Yeah, we've we've had a bit of a trip and everything in here seems to be properly stowed down so uh sure i'll i'll have a drink with you it's a little early but um you know when when in um you know uh when in a what is an equivalent of rome in my setting fuck i don't know <laughs> i was gonna say um hold what's on. the main city's name you know, hold on he's not gonna say gilly Trotrophia. he's gonna actually you know what there is a vacation town hold on i recently came with a vacation town and that would be Hey. Pretty damn good. Nope, that's the star map. That's the Great White North. That's an old map that's no longer working. Where the... Oh, that, that page fell, but it was blank. Blank page. Why do I have so many map pages? Here we go. <laughs> Alright, uh, you hear him say, well, uh, when in Hesseram, as he kind of like will walk up next to you and he'll, he'll just grab a bottle out of the box as you're carrying it. Beautiful. Awesome. Let's go find Arrakis while everybody else is doing stupid stuff. Uh, all right. Um, okay. And you see him kind of like take the the kind of bottle with like the kind of cap and just kind of like clink it against his arm and just pss, open it. But yeah. Um, and then I, as we walk down to go get him, I just yell to everybody else. If anybody else wants to get drunk with us, we're gonna be in the main room. You're a useless piece of shit. Fuck you too. Ouch. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Damn, that clap bag was hard. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Revan, are you staying down here in like the kind of dining area, quote unquote, or are you heading upstairs? I'm heading to. Uh, actually, you know, we'll stay in the dining area, and uh, I'll, I guess, I'll put down the drinks and go get uh, Arrakis. Okay, um, just give me a general investigation check. Oh, hope I can find the man. Yeah. And the, the DC's this not terribly, terribly high. It's, it's pretty low no DC. Oh, yeah, no, it takes you just like a couple minutes because you like, you, and it's like you do go floor to floor, but it doesn't take you terribly long because there's not too many places you could be. As you will eventually find him in the teleportation room, kind of like, you know, um, writing down the coordinates, but as well as kind of like talking to himself at the moment, but it seems like he's having a conversation. But uh, we'll get to that in a moment. As Salvador, you are actually, Revan, you'll be, That's able, me. You'll be able to place yourself oh. on the floor too, because Salvador is on the same floor. Uh, Salvador, oh God. Uh, you would be here in the, uh, in the sort of workshop room. Anarachus. Wonderful. What cruel mercy. Here. Put me on the same floor. Uh, so yeah, you have these kind of like large tables to work at. The few tools in here aren't really great, but you can use them if you need them. Um, but yeah, you have the drank drink out on one of the tables. You're tinkering with it, um, and you're just trying to reload it. Absolutely, though, if there were any improvements I could make to this perfect invention, I would also attempt that. Okay, uh, in that case, if you want to try and make an improvement, give me a intelligence check. Absolutely. Am I proficient in this, do you think? This is a tinker's tools or a... I'd say, or yeah. A, a fucky-wucky tools. You'd be, Let's go. You'd be Pog. proficient with this. In which case, I have a four... So that's a plus seven in this, I think. So I will give this a whole Harvard try. Uh, slash roll. 1d20. Plus seven. 26. Okay. 19 plus 7. So you've, very nice. You've tested out the drank crank before now. Um, it has a very rudimentary kind of loading chamber. Um, you built it with specific size, 
to, you know, house a dart filled with, you know, a various liquor to try and, you know, inoculate somebody at a reasonable pace. Um, <coughs> but you, you're kind of thinking like, okay, it's a risk mounted device, but you think if you had the appropriate amount of scrap material, you could either A, make it a two-shot weapon, or you can make a secondary one to go on your other wrist. My god, infinite power. Yep. Uh, so at the very least, you can make note uh, that you have the the rudimentary idea to make either a second or an upgraded drank drank. You would need to, you know, at least sketch out a, a schematic uh, and then, you know, make the device. But it's it, with a with a twenty six at the moment. You it, sketching the schematic would be pretty easy. Yeah, well, honestly, plan change then. I'm going to reload this goddamn thing and also start a sketching. Okay, in that case, to reload it, just go ahead and make me a tinkering check. Fantastic, same rule. Uh, 1d20 plus 7, 24. Yeah. Big numbers today. Oh, Big yeah. smart boy, 5 head out yeah, here. Yeah, no problem. It is easy enough to reload. Um, you know, the, you, it, the all is quiet, uh, apart from a slight murmuring across the hall. <sighs> The kind of gradual sands of the wind on sand far below you, kind of blowing through the breeze. Um, but yeah, you are able to kind of hone in, uh, and it, it's almost relaxing uh, being able to just tinker in silence like this again. As uh, not too long it takes for you to properly reload the uh, the dart and then load it back into your wrist gauntlet. Wonderful. This is gonna murk a motherfucker. Oh, is yeah. all I know. And uh, whenever you want, you can go ahead and roll me a um, a uh, tinkering check to do some schematics. And you can roll with advantage because of the 26. But advantage? Well, the first one's shit, so that's going to have that. Um, okay. The second one is... The first one was shit enough. It's a 10. <laughs> okay, so uh, after reloading the drank drank, um, you know, you, you start working on the schematic. Um, you're sketching up the idea. You have the original schematic for the drank drank itself up. And you you are able to recreate that no problem if you were to try and like mount it to a separate arm you just kind of badly draw the hand it's mounted to to be like yeah that's that's the other side hand that works yeah. um, but when it comes to kind of drawing the schematic for the like double chambered one you're a little stuck um, you know you're kind of trying to calculate in your head and you do realize now you're getting just a, a little bit parched. Um, just because of the dry heat of the desert. It's it's not like you're sweating profusely, but it's like, I, little, you know, it, you kind of like lick your lips. It's like, oh, my mouth's a little dry. I think it might be just the, the too many arrows on the blueprint saying fucking sick, <laughs> you know? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, but that being said, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, quickly hop to Revan um, before hopping back to the cleaning crew. Uh, Revan, you can go and place your character up here as um, you've checked these floors and the last two floors to check would be uh, this one and then the cockpit, which you know Arrakis wasn't in when you came down. Alrighty. Yep, there I you am. go. And uh, I'd say just poking your head into these two rooms respectively, you would see Salvador kind of like sketching on something and on the one across the hall oh. you'd see Arrakis kind of standing over the circle. Salvador, are you uh, working around in there? I'm do yeah, I'm doing stuff and things. What's up? What do you need from me? Very, very descriptive. You want to get drunk? Uh Dead? oh, baby, you you're getting drunk the old-fashioned way, the the Neanderthal way. This bad boy, and I'm gonna turn around with a drink triangle reloaded. This bad boy is going to be the actual new goddamn generation of drunk. This thing is going to make so many fucking failed marriages, I tell you what. Alright? Are you going to shoot me with it, or what? No, no, no. I only have one shot, and it'd be really sad. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, well, you know, uh, I guess I'll go Neanderthal, drink my way, whatever a Neanderthal is. I throw an orange at him. Stay, uh, stay scurvy away from. Uh, Revan, roll me a D100 for the orange. Yeah. It, it, roll one, roll one, it kills me. <laughs> oh, yeah, 73%. It, it lands close enough to its intended target as it just kind of bounces on the table. Uh, I was going to say, All if right. it was low, then you would just throw it out a hole in the wall and it would just fling off into the desert. How many goddamn oranges do you have? 
infinite. Hey, if you followed Scurve, you would know. You can't, that's scientifically stupid. You can't have infinite orange juice. <laughs> but, uh, that means... Yeah, you know what else is scientifically stupid? Trying to shoot yourself to get drunk. Not me, someone else, some, some other motherfucker is going to get a real buzz. This is, this is a stupid conversation. I'm going to eat this orange and I'm going to think about things. I don't know. You're welcome for the orange, by the way. Enjoy. Go home. Just, I'm not gonna lie. Get a job, you hippie. With, uh, with Salvador saying this is how it's gonna be drunk, I'm just thinking of the scene from Always Sunny where it's like, the, the shotgun shot class. Get blasted! It's like, what yes. the? And it's just somebody getting shot in the mouth and dart. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Revan, oh, uh, easily <laughs> enough, you're able to walk across the hall, and you see, uh, you see Arrakis just Making notes, talking to himself. He'll he'll pick his head up. He's like, "Oh, hey, Revan." Hey, uh, talking to yourself as usual. It's, uh, I was making a call. Um, uh, me and I, I, made know, a... I, I assumed I was just trolling you. Who are you talking to? Uh, uh, I'm talking to the emp- or I was talking to the empress. Um, just you know, me and I made a good point. I do you did, did I? tell you guys that that was a, a, like a marriage or did I, I thought I didn't tell you anybody about that yet no no we we, we assumed I, I think you know she made it pretty clear that that was her intention um I mean maybe maybe not I don't know I just I, you know according to a technicality I bested her betrothed champion so it it technically was official but I just didn't feel the need to argue it, because, you know, I'm I'm not going to get that lucky twice, so at the very least, but uh, what's up, man? Well, I, you know, would love to continue this lady conversation with you, the, your fish lady specifically, over some drinks that I found to not, you know, pass the time, because we got a little bit. Uh, you know what? Yeah, sure. I, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, it's like being on an airship, only a little awesome. freakier. Awesome. As you'll kind of like walk directly. Yeah, through. me, me, you, and Felden are gonna get slammed. You just gonna kind of great. Like, All right. Yeah. Then let's, uh, let's do it. As you'll follow you back downstairs. And with that in mind, uh, we're gonna cut back to Mina and Eris. Uh, you guys walk into the kind of like, um, you know, bathing area. And, you know, the, the, the tubs look like the water has been recently changed out. The innards of them have been cleaned and whatnot. The floors look grimy. And uh, the, the toilets, at the very least, um, you know, for the most part, the inside toilet system isn't too filthy. There's, like, maybe a little bit of, like, um, kind of dust that has kind of settled in there. But it's, you know, it could have been much worse. But thankfully, Mira had his bots kind of fix the plumbing a little and that did a bit of intentional cleaning as well but the the toilets and the the bath are you know they could they could use a bit of a good scrub so if you want you can go ahead and roll me another set of d20s i do have a question yes for the um plumbing uh as well as more specifically the toilet system do we have like a, a like a septic tank or are we just kind of like openly dumping as we're traveling well um basically uh, I, I will give you this choice would you like to try and just test the toilet like not using it but just like you know flushing it yes okay i yeah. would love to yeah this has a kind of rudimentary kind of pulley system to where you you see the kind of dust settled water in the toilet and you see like the kind of little chain handle that's hanging from like a, a, a bin next or not a bin but like a little basin uh, above it, uh-huh. you pull the little chain, and you see just like a hole, kind of like in an airplane, just kind of open up, and the water just drops out, and you just see far below you just desert, just miles of desert. <laughs> As uh, yeah, it it's literally just the longest long drop. Oh no, Revan can't find out about this. <laughs> He'll never leave the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah. Okay. All right, let's get to know. All right, let's go fucking get cleaning. All right. So I feel a little weird that the the two the only two people cleaning up. I'm not gonna say it. Nope, not gonna say oh, it. Oh fuck. Uh, 
Okay. Oh, two is seven. All right. Um, you guys, you know, you guys did a great job in the kitchen. Um, and then you get into the bathroom and you're getting a little worn out. Um, but that being Uh said, you're at least, you know, you get, you get it dusted and whatnot. There's some parts that could use probably a little bit of a, a proper scrubbing as there's like, you know, um, just, just gunk that's built up at like the base of both the tub and the toilet not anything that looks to be like you know Uh bodily excrements or anything like that but just grime from sitting kind of in this basement and whatnot um yeah but yeah you you guys are a little tuckered out as you 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 know you 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 know for the most part dust the bathrooms and as you both exit the kind of area you would see the guys having a drink and iraq's like oh hey uh Oh, I didn't know you guys were cleaning. I would have helped if you needed. Uh, that's, that's all right. Um, I made a discovery, um, and honestly, it triggered my fear of heights. Um, and I'm a very small, I'm a very small little being. Um, but I'll explain that another time. Oh, I, I, I'm but, sorry to hear that. But um, um, how goes it? How goes it? Oh, it's good. Revan's um, Revan just. Decided to have us all start having a drink. You you guys want to sit down? Um. Actually, Arrakis, I had a question for you, sir. Yeah. What's up? Do you have any spells that would be useful for you know sort of repairing this place? Uh, sp- repairing spells. Uh, let's see. Is he kind of like scratches his head for a second and takes a drink as the DM's gonna. Have a look. Uh, let's see. Immediately, his cantrips are yeah. set, so a lot more attacks up. Let's, let's check his spell book. Let's go ahead and get into that. Get into level. Uh, <coughs> let's have a look. Spells. Let's see. He is kind of mulling over what he can do, and he thinks for a minute, he's like, um, I, I, I don't have, like, uh, I think it's, I think it's called mending. I don't have that, unfortunately. Um, oh, sorry. What I, that's oh, fine. Um, what I have, uh, I, I can do mage hand to help kind of, like, give an extra hand if we needed to, you know, hold something up to set it. Uh, I yeah. have press yeah. digitation, which I, I feel bad for not using sooner, because I, I could have been probably helping you guys clean this place i just i didn't know i after you told me i should have called faf i decided to do that immediately whilst getting the teleportation coordinates um also that's fair darling that's okay thank you don't Um, worry i just i i realized that i have forgotten the spells that would be useful for putting this place back together and i was hoping maybe somebody had something but that's a-okay you know, if we stop somewhere, I can. I, I, I'm more than happy to buy a mending or look into mending. But um, also, I talked to Revan about this a couple minutes ago. Uh huh. Did I explicitly tell you that I was technically married now? Oh, you did. It was kind of just the. Implication? Assumption, I guess. Oh, I'm not sure if I don't if I remember you explicitly saying that. Is there an issue? Is oh, no, that no, 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 not no. how it is? No issue. It's just um, while it was only. Well, it's obviously bothering you. Well, no, I. It, it's. If you're bringing it up. Just, you know. Between everybody in this room, and I, I guess by extension the tower, if you want to tell her, gone. Um. She didn't want to make it too public yet, as she has just sort of become empress and just sort of integrated with the surface. She thought, uh, ease into it, so her people don't okay. think like she's trying to sell up to the surface. Um, uh-huh, uh-huh. By technical stance... Mm, for... Thank you. Um, yeah, by like, technical stance, because it all fairness when we were down there I, I beat her champion so I technically took his spot which I as I said to Revan didn't want to argue I'm not going to get that lucky twice um, but yeah I just I just wanted to make sure I didn't like drunkenly blather that out or something I just you know 
but yeah, it's kind of preferred that you would have. Well, I mean, it, I think I think the the terminology of like betrothed and everything sort of came out, and then it just sort of I just assumed that it would happen. Like I I assumed y'all hadn't had like an official ceremony yet. No, but I thought that as far as like all intents and purposes that it was a done deal um i mean technically you're not wrong um she we both agreed that we like well in you know in traditional sense of people married but you know we wanted to i mean a i want to respect her wish to you know take it slow but also we both wanted to kind of you know get to know each other we had a few dates when we could whilst we were traveling and back in the city um, uh-huh. and then when we had to leave, you know, we, you know, we both understood that we would catch up when we both got back. Um, she mm-hmm. told me actually she was heading back to the ocean after meeting with the king to do something. Um, I'm pretty sure there's, uh, well, after hearing about what happened to Rack, uh, the, the nations it's over on, there's definitely some type of, you know, war well, not war games, but there's, there's, hopefully there's some type of strategy that they're putting into place. Because when I called her, she was a little busy, but, you know, we were able to chat. Uh-huh. Okay, well, we'll stop telling people that you're uh, married to her. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I didn't it's, realize. Oh, no, it's, it's, you know, honest mistake. I just wanted to make sure, I was like, did I say that to multiple, did I, like, I... All right. Just, you know, I... It's all right, darling. It's, it's no need Might to tell everybody, though. Well, Revan, please. No one will believe you, Revan, well, if I, I say otherwise. That's the point, is if I tell everybody, then nobody will think it's true. Well, hold on. Think about it that way. Hold on. Maybe maybe we do the, the other idea where you tell nobody, and still nobody will think it's true because you haven't said anything. Mm. It's just, you know, that's just an a, interesting proposal. It's, yeah, I'll have to think about it. Just an easier way. Well, I mean, <laughs> Revan, Revan. Tell me, under under your religion, under Lord Skurf, um, sure. are there specific marriage requirements um, as far as the ceremony or, or oaths to be taken? So um, for your religion, you wouldn't be married because they wouldn't be married under Lord Skurf, would they? Well, there is one thing that we're not allowed to do. Uh-huh. He are not allowed to marry oranges. What what a tragedy. Uh, Revan, at the mention of this, yes. make me a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Um... <laughs> uh, you're talking about something Shit. pretty official. Even, I messed it up. Even in... Yeah. Okay. Um, Revan, you kind Sorry, of like... Sorry, I, I did one That's wrong. That's oh, one at 20. Yeah, I know, I did it. Okay. There we go. Right. So if you, you want to take the eight, eight, you can. But... That's fine. It, it's still, um... Uh, an eight would have uh, been a hard failure, but a 17 is... You're able to resist any type of, you know, compulsion or anything like that, and you're able to kind of just hear in the back of your ear, Lord Scourge, and be like, Um, actually... Being official, gotta get me out soon. That's it. That's that's mm, all he kind of chimes okay. into your ear. Only Revan hears that. I was gonna say, did, did did anybody hear that? I just got talked to by Lord Here. Skurve, and uh, you... he confirmed exactly what I told you guys. How drunk are you, Revan? Um, not drunk enough. We've only and each I had like maybe two drinks. Hmm, that's concerning. I mean, it's not the first time you guys have had people, well, it's not the first time present company hasn't had people talking in their heads. I mean, you know, Mina, you have your necklace, Rob, the, or Revan, <laughs> the Citrine talked to you for a while. I, I've had people talk in my head before, you know, it's. I just, um, no, no, it's, it's all right. You know, no, I'll 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 keep my thoughts to myself. No, it's it's fine. It's just you know, it's, we're in this line of business. People are gonna talk in our heads. 
Speaking of which, Revan. That's my name. Wear it out. Um, have you um attuned yourself to any of the uh, other stones recently? Uh, you know, I don't really have time to talk about that right now. So I, I will just say but that uh, I'm going to keep drinking and we'll do that later. You see fellas, but, but we're literally just sitting around having a drink. I feel like now would be the perfect time to talk about it. See, and that's where you would be wrong, because that's Aquarot's what you getting, think, not what I think. She's getting a little um, anxious about the, the mountain. And, well, you know, you should tell you her know, to stop being I have anxious. to assume that the, the stones in your possession are probably feeling pretty anxious, too, but they are all by their lonesomes. That is really unfortunate for them, isn't it? so sad to be so isolated i i i will tell you this much i promise that we will talk about it just not right now when talk talk about it when because if you're you're meaning like 50 years from now then that's you know oh no not super i helpful. know i'm normally about these things but i don't mean 50 years from now I mean, like, 40 years from now. Uh, well, I mean, like, is there a reason you're so apprehensive, Robin? Um, well, yes. It is because the, you know, the rocks are not to be completely trusted right now. So. But the voice in your head is to be trusted, but not the voice in my head. She, I didn't say that. She's kind of got you there, Revan. I trust that the voice in your head... Wait, what are you talking about? I got... What's it? It's like a I got, like, standard. three voices in my head. No, no, Observe no, no. Observe no. talks like only to you. Aqua Rock talks only to me. They're different. And I have two How other can one rocks. one be trusted and not the other? Well, hold on. Are you... And not... Uh, yeah. I was going to say, have you still been speaking to the other two rocks, or...? Not recently, no. I've been busy, as you guys know. Uh huh. I'm, you know, I. I know. Just, it just seems like you value your own opinion on matters more than you value my opinion. Um. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, no, that is incorrect. I value your opinion greatly. I just don't trust these things. That's all. That's a that's a personal thing that I have, and you are asking me. To trust them without giving me any evidence as well, to why they do so. I have helped you tell the world about Lord Scurve. Oh, I no, got, no, I, no, I've no. You don't even believe in Lord Scurve yourself. I practice. Uh, no, you do not. Revan, we... When was I, the last time you even ate an orange? She, we've all... We literally had breakfast with sliced oranges this morning. No, no, yeah. no. You don't understand. That that is. It's one of our main sources of food, Revan. We just throwing keep... at them at, at them at us constantly. You know what? I'm about to throw them into the desert if you keep talking about it. Okay? I told you I don't want to right now. I will do it later. I, okay, if I, I do promise you that I will. If I may, but... for a moment, because as part of you know guard training, um, part of my official training was dealing with situations like this where. Perhaps there's mistrust or apprehension of some sort, and if uh -huh. I may, as my duties to hopefully still uh, assist, if you're feeling untrustworthy, let's have a look at the track record that's happened with Mina and this stone. Um, Mina, has the stone ever hindered you or upset you or done anything to um, make you feel uneasy? Um, I was a little apprehensive at first, but now that I've gotten to know her, it's not an issue. Okay. Also, that that's, I, I get it, man. We're just, you know, this is a fun scene. Oh, um, I know, I know, I know. I, okay. I'm just letting you guys know. <laughs> As, you know what? Okay, so it sounds like for the most part, the stone hasn't been too negative. But if, you know, how's about this? 
we take an evening. We all have our time to, you know, kind of think this over. Mina, you can uh -huh. think about it. And Revan, you can think about it. If the uh -huh. stones haven't hindered you or Mina, then perhaps we can try giving Mina another one or give somebody else a stone so they can talk about it. Um, but that being said, we got a long trip ahead of us. We probably uh -huh. have plenty of time to think about this unless we get attacked by Sky Beasts. So uh -huh. let's just, you know, <sighs> conflict uh -huh. re resolution. You know, we'll, we'll all have a minute uh -huh. to think about this clearly since it seems like it's a pretty straightforward uh -huh. clear day. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. And uh -huh. I continue to drink and uh -huh. just kind of ignore the next part of it. All right. Labeled the discussion, of course, yet again. I go off to clean oh, something. Get over yourself. You're fine. I go off to clean something. I'm going upstairs. Alright. Okay. Eris, do you follow I'll him? I'll follow Nina. Okay. And uh, with that, as you guys head upstairs, uh, Revan, you'll just kind of like see Feld and Arrak is kind of like looking at you, shrug a little bit to each other, and just kind of the last statement the Arrak was like, we give it a, you know, she's probably brought up some good points before. Just give it a little bit of a thought, Revan, you know? Oh, listen, I fully intend to give it to her one day. She just has never actually given me more of a logical reason than, oh, you they feel bad about being separated. Well, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's not a reason for me because I will be honest with you. We still don't know the intentions of these things. And well, they don't make that very they don't make it very clear well if i may, what they want you know it seems the the main way do you to, own one no but if i can talk about it for a second as a sort of a rising master of magics the main way it sure. seems you guys have spoken to them is through dreams you don't really dream um so that's they can't really converse with you too much mina has conversed with hers for i think over a year now it seems to only sure. kind of been, I don't know how helpful it's, well, actually it was pretty helpful because it allows her to breathe underwater. At the very least, it's been helpful with that. Um, but Yes, they are very helpful in their rock form, but we do not know what is to become of them afterwards. That's true, but let's just think about it from this perspective. If you had someone that you cared about and you found out they're alive, but... Let's say, you know, maybe they're not being held captive, but they're being held. Wouldn't you want your friends or family safe, too? Mm, unless if somebody locked them in these things because they were bad. Well, we don't know if they'll be able to right? break out. Like, I mean, you know what? That's a fair question. How about this? I'll play mediator. I'll go ask Mina if it's ever talked about breaking out. No. Good. Okay. Like I said, I want Mina to come to me, okay. and I want her to have a logical reasoning that has nothing to do with the emotions of their connection. You know, we, we got to think about this because we have been betrayed before. Okay. You know, I already had to kill Aiden. I don't want to have to kill these things. We got a whole lot of other mess to deal with. Well, there are on. undead everywhere. Hold on. We're heading to a mountain. I We're feel... going to need these things as well. I feel like comparing a rock to Aiden is very different. I feel like Aiden was more of we pushed him slowly out the door as opposed to he's a rock, but I can see the comparison. <laughs> and then Fallon's like, No, yeah, it's no, just you... more of I'm not trusting of that. Okay. Well, at the very least, consider. Um, we'll table this for now, but, uh, you know, if, if at the very least, if, um, if it's all right with you, We'll bring up your concerns to Mina, so that way, if she has something to say, she can properly, eloquently state it. But until then, we got a long trip, so we'll, we'll all just mull this over. Yeah, I think we just got better shit to do right now, and more important things. Well, right now, no, we're just kind of whether or not the rock people get to. Oh, but you know what I mean. True, we, but... we don't get many breaks between this and, uh, you know. Uh, our fight here. That's true. So. Uh, but just, you know, to Arrakis' point earlier, 
is a little bit of a double standard, but that's all I'm going to say. And with that, we're going to quickly jump upstairs to Salvador. Uh, what are you up to up there after um, Revan popped in? At this point, I am, I am taking so much earthly pleasure in doing absolutely goddamn nothing. All right. Honestly. This is heaven on earth. This is heaven on earth. There aren't any skeletons on the desk. Nobody's shooting me with a gun or like a monster, yeah. you know. Everything's so normal. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm just, I'm just soaking this in, you know. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, you're, you're, you know, you're in this kind of workshop space that's pretty, you know, familiar and nice. At least in the sense of the, you know, it's nice being back in a workshop. You got a, while the structure of the wall itself isn't too great to look at, but beyond it, you have a beautiful sprawling view of a mass, massive landscape. Um, uh, it's, it is very serene, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's ultimately nice. And if there's nothing you're doing or working on, then yeah. One actual door. question, is there anything I can steal? Uh, I mean, like I said, there's a few kind of older rusty tools, but nothing mm. really to loot in this room. Good enough for me. Um, but that being said, uh, with that in mind i think we will go ahead and call the early session here as uh we have put some interesting stuff into motion uh but before we do that i want you all guys to roll me perception checks as the day turns to night yeah. Ooh, perception uh -huh. peter okay give me the fat old plus four wow we plus five now 18, baby! Nope, oh, still plus four. Very nice. Let me see. Here we go. Slash roll 1d20 plus four. It's a seven. Seven. You're, you're pretty caught up um, in, like, you know, what once evening rolls around, Salvador, you're just a little like, I can go for a nap. Uh, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So Salvador. Yeah, 15. Yeah, very nice. Uh, so we'll start off with the lowest and work our way up. Uh, Salvador. You kind of slowly see the sun start to set beyond the horizon, and you 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 um you did quite a bit of you know good tinkering today. It kicked back, relaxed a bit, but even still, um, you're ready to kind of hit the hay, get some sleep, and get you know recharged for the next day. Maybe maybe work on a schematic, maybe not. Who knows? But other than that, you head to bed rather rather relatively early for once. Uh, which is something you haven't been able to do uh, after joining this group because they're uh, they're pretty much on the go all the time, which impressive, but not practical, at least not by your standards. So you go ahead and get a good night's sleep. Um, and now Revan isn't here to put a dead man in my bed. You know, Revan uh, also kind of drinks himself into a good night's sleep early as well. Um, Arrakis and Felton eventually helping him to a spot where he can you know put his feet up and rest safely and not you know worry about getting blown out of the side of the building. Um, but that being said, Eris and Mina, um, as you guys are kind of, you know, intermittently cleaning the tower, and we'll say that you're able to, like, fully clean the, um, the kind of entry walkway as well, um, no, no rolls needed, as you'd probably spend your time just up, uh, away from Revan at the moment, you both would kind of see out the, uh, the four windows in that space, um, you know, the gradual sunset, but then you would notice something about the night sky itself. Um, and you've seen similar instances of the night sky like this before. There it was when you were leaving the island, when it had that sort of interesting greenish sort of coloration in the sky, kind of like the Aurora Borealis. Uh, you remember uh -huh. the night sky when Arrakis fell from space, and it had that kind of purplish hue. Yes. Uh, but now, mm -hmm. as you slowly look out onto the sky... Um, you see all the stars twinkling amongst the, the, the vast space that is night sky. But now the, the, the sort of coloration is this pinkish red. Um, there's points where it kind of ebbs and flows, vibrant and then dull, as it seems to be sprawling from one point of the horizon to the other. Um, it is oh, very no. noticeable. It is not making like you know, the night sky red or anything. It's not like it's some type of blood moon effect. But it is a noticeable instance in the night sky. I don't like that. I don't like the way that looks, Ares. All the monsters have regenerated tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Blood moon rises. Oh, shit. 
Uh, but with that, we are going to go ahead and call nice. session right there. Uh, thank you all wow. so much for hanging out. Um, to, Re to Rob, who had to leave early, perfectly fine. Thanks for sticking around as long as you could if you ever watch this back. To my players who are still here, thank you all so much for coming. I know the session was a little short, and I do apologize for that. But at the very least, next week we will hit it back hard with the entire group, hopefully recharged and refreshed. Uh, for everyone in chat who stopped by, thank you so much. Again, sorry for the shorter session, but hopefully we get into some a uh, bit of action and drama next week. But other than that, uh, tune in next week, same time, same place, and uh, next week a very special event will be happening that'll uh, that I'll be actually doing for all my D and D groups because next exactly. week is my birthday, Ooh. so I'm going to be wow. giving you all a big old nice. gift. Uh, but until then. Keep tuned to the Game House Twitch page. Uh, if you want more updates on the World of Astaria, check out the Instagram page, the World of Astaria. If you want updates on Twitter, check out Welcome to Astaria. Uh, that's welcome spelled without an E because I'm an idiot and didn't know how Twitter works. And, uh, yeah, uh, if you want to see the entirety of the series and all of its technologically challenged glory, head on over to the YouTube page, the World of Astaria. And until next time, everybody, we'll see you all around the house. Have a good night. Bye, everyone. Bye. Good, Good night. night.